Hello, hello. So today we're going to do a tutorial. And this is for people that have recently purchased SnowRunner or have been playing SnowRunner and decided, you know what, I want to try out hard mode. How hard is it to start out in the beginning of hard mode? Well, if you don't have, you know, mods or any of your DLC vehicles, if you have DLC content, um, it's a it's a bit difficult because you have to uh, deal with several different things. Um, in fact, we will bring up on the screen <laughs> right here. Go to hard mode. Oops, except I wanted to stay on hard mode. Um, so some of the things that you have to deal with, you have to pay for your fuel and repairs. You have to pay for your vehicle deployment, which this is going to be important for what we're going to show you today. Um, so you have to worry about your money a lot. Um, paying for your vehicle recovery. So if you recover the vehicle back to the garage, it costs money. And it costs different amounts of money depending on the type of vehicle, whether it's a scout or a heavy or a, you know, highway truck, that kind of thing. They're all a little bit different in cost. Uh, you have to pay every time you load cargo, so you generally want to have cranes, right? Um, you're not able to sell your trailers, so you can't like take a trailer that you find and go and sell it at the shop and make some money back or use the, you know, campaign or new game plus trick of going to a trailer store, buying a fuel trailer, filling yourself up and then selling the trailer back. Um, so there's there's lots of different things that you have to take into consideration when you're doing hard mode. Um, the next one down, you sell your trucks and equipment for half its price. That one is also going to come into play with the, this tutorial. Um, you're going to be pretty broke when you start this. We're going to make it even more broke, but we're going to go get two vehicles that are going to help you progress a lot faster in hard mode. And we're, this is the easiest way. This is not necessarily the most, uh, you know, purest way, um, you need essentially one DLC for sure you need season eight um, and that'll be on the screen here um, season eight is the um, the glades essentially it's the the Central Asia map uh, it comes as part of season two or I'm sorry year two pass um, so if you have year two pass already you already have this DLC and we're gonna go there we're gonna pick up two vehicles um, so that's basically what the goal is of this um, so let's get started. Um, I turned off all my mods. I'm um, not using any mods for this. You don't need mods. Um, the optional DLC, which I'm also going to use, is the JAT tire pack, which that I'm going to pop up on the screen here. And you can do it without it. It just, again, we're going for the easiest start, right? Um, so as you see, I have no truck storage, right? Normally you'd have something right here. Um, if you had DLC trucks available to you in hard mode, none of those are available to sell. So we have we can buy them, but we don't have any of them available. This is the only truck you start with when you start hard mode is the Chevy. And it's very base. So the thing we're going to do to it, though, we have, if you notice up here, we have $8,850. We're going to buy tires, okay? So there's two different tires you can get, right? If you don't have the JAT tire pack this is the one i would recommend getting make sure it's the 31 inch the 31 inch is the key here okay and there's going to be a couple of tips as we go through this but any of these three are fine um this one tends to be the best in mud uh the rest of them are a little bit less in mud but i'm gonna actually go all the way down to mud tires if you have the jat tire pack we're going to buy these ones for $5,900, the 31 inch JAT MS3s. Okay. So we're going to just buy those right away. And this is not necessary. We're not going to sell these. We're going to keep them, but I'm actually going to install the highway tires again, real quick, just because when we leave the garage, we do need to do one thing here real quick. This is something that you generally always do. And these tires are better on the road for pulling. And this is the garage, so we're on the road. We need to pull this Fleet Star over here and repair it. So that's step one. 
going to hook up our winch to this. Grab that upgrade while you're here. I hook it to the side. I hate it when it does that. Hook to the back. Okay, there you go. Throw your all-wheel drive on. That's fine. We're just going to drag it over here. We got to get it by this repair trailer so we can repair it. It's one thing that you'll know, you'll find out in, that's not listed, but in hard mode, um, trailers need to be attached in order for you to um, do repairs from them. On normal, a lot of times you can use these without being attached. So this is what I do with this one. I get the tongue of the trailer, like where you would attach the trailer, kind of lined up with with it's all the way on the left hand side of the screen here sorry with this guy okay so that's what we're trying to do and then we hook up our winch from there to there and we just drag it backwards just a little bit so we can get it attached to this truck Okay, and we can shut this engine off, change to the fleet star, attach the trailer, and then repair everything. Okay, so that's step one. Then we're going to refuel it from the fleet star. Just take a little bit of gas from it. Attach this trailer, and we want to take this to the garage. And why we want to take this to the garage is we want to equip that all-wheel drive that we just got. So we're going to go to customize the all-wheel drive, equip this, and then just go ahead and sell this one right away. We need a little bit of money back. Now, we need $3,500 to transfer a vehicle to another zone. We are $50 short. So what we're going to do is we're going to just leave the garage with this right away. And we're going to activate this husky forwarding quest here farming tools this is one of the easiest ones to just do quickly and it's this trailer right here the one right in front of the repair trailer where we were and we're going to attach this trailer oh the game is saving there we go You can throw the all-wheel drive on. You don't have to. It doesn't matter. While we're on the road, we can leave it off. It saves you a little bit of fuel. So we're going to take this guy. To the farm, which is just down the road here. Don't worry about the dangerous water level warnings. You don't need snorkels or anything for any of this. Like I said, dude, I'm just making it easy by getting a little bit better tires. That's it. Now we can put our all-wheel drive on. We're slipping a little bit. If you stay to the right here, it's a little bit easier to get through. But it doesn't really matter either way. You'll get through with this truck. It's a little slow, that's all. And you're going to be sweating bullets a little bit with the amount of fuel you have left in this thing but that's okay we're gonna grab a fuel trailer right away And we're going to do this in real time to show you how long it'll take you. Because it's really not that much work to get this done. And then you can start with quite a few real good vehicles to start the game. Okay, so that is turned in. We just got $1,050. So that was the 50 we needed. And then we have, an, we have a thousand extra. 
which is unnecessary in this case. Now, if you did this without the JAT tire pack, you don't actually need to do this quest or this uh, contract, I should say. Because um, you don't need the extra money. You will, you, you will have $3,500 left over. However, it's nice to have this fuel. So if you're going to go and get this fuel anyhow, you may as well just go get it. So we're going to go in here. We're, our objective is to not get tasks. But you can pick this task up right away. It's a good habit to pick up tasks as you pass them. And we're going to winch this guy out of here. So I don't want to back all the way in there just in case it's muddy. We'll drive it out with the winch and we'll hook it up on the road. Okay, let's attach. And there you go. You have a full fuel trailer you can fill up any of your vehicles with. Because fuel costs you money normally. But not if you find these fuel trailers around, and there's lots of them to find. Fuel is definitely never really an issue on these first few maps. Or few regions, I should say, of the game. Now you can start and go into whatever region you would like to, because it does give you enough money to take the Chevy wherever. Um, but it's usually a pretty good idea to start in Michigan, because it gives you a bunch of good vehicles to start with. But... The Glades gives you a couple even better ones. And the bonus is you get a $7,500 crane, too. That you can use later on. You don't need it right away, but... It's one of the big vehicle cranes. And it's free. Okay, so let's take this back to the base here. I like to park it somewhere where returning vehicles or even, um, you know, exiting the garage vehicles can fill up. So I'm just going to go over here, sort of next to where the Chevy is. Somewhere around here is a decent spot. That way... Okay, so we're going to detach this trailer. I'm just going to leave this guy out here. Turn him around, turn him off. We'll just top it off again right away. And, oops. Back. Change truck. All right, so this guy, we're going to fill back up. It doesn't really matter, but we will want fuel for a little bit of a trip that we need to make because we do need to get one more vehicle. So let's fill it up, and then we're going to go equip those tires now right away. Those ones we bought, we're going to just hop in the garage. And again, do not sell these uh, highway tires. We're just going to equip these. Okay, so now we have both sets of tires. We're going to leave the garage. Now you can do, there's several different paths around that you can take. You can go straight out of the garage and pick up an upgrade right away. Um, I'm just going to go directly to where I need to go, which is making a left out of the garage here, and we're going to, as we go, talk a little bit more about hard mode. Um, like I said, it's there's plenty of things that make it a challenge, like not being able to change if you're, uh, right now it's daytime, but obviously it's going to be nighttime and you can't change the time. Um, there is an option in normal to be able to basically skip time ahead so it goes back to daytime can't do that in hard mode um 
some of the vehicles or not vehicles some of the missions um and picking up cargo for them like will show you exactly where it is uh and you can't um see exactly where some of the items are it'll just put like a essentially like a yellow circle like a general vicinity go in this area and find what you're looking for so you, you'd have to kind of find your resources not a terrible thing though So these tires will make it easier. Like I said, the, the all-terrain ones that you could put on the AS2s, like I said, are the are the probably the better of the three. We'll do just fine for this. It'll just take you a little bit longer. That's it. We'll just have to drive a little more slowly in some of the mud areas. But we're gonna use these tires, we're gonna swap these tires to the other vehicle we're gonna go get. It's on the northwestern part of this map. Again, you could swing by different places and get watchtowers on your way. There's upgrades to get on the way. That is totally up to you. It doesn't matter if you do it one way or another. If you do, you'll end up with a little bit more money at the end of this. Um, but like I said, for, for sake of the video and the tutorial, we're just going to go quickly. And I'm going to try and not veer off the road. We're gonna make a right here. Follow this road up. Now these barricades you can go through, you can push through them or you can drive up to them slowly and honk your horn. And it'll knock some of them over. Sometimes. Sometimes not. <laughs> and again, go through. So this is a little bit of water over the road. Go through this a little slowly so you don't do any damage to your truck. Because damage is, doesn't fix for free when you go to the garage either. That's another hard mode change. You have to pay for repairs. And nobody likes a crumpled up vehicle. So again, gas does cost you money from gas stations you can just refill at gas stations but it costs money just like real life unfortunately gas is uh it's not uh, as expensive as it has been in the past but uh never know could go up again okay let's turn the all-wheel drive off while we go through town we're almost there So coming up here, we are going to get one watchtower. Turn my all-wheel drive back on. We're going to go past this watchtower here. There's many ways you can get to where this is. Um, and if you use, there's a tool called Map Runner, or the, a website, I should say, called Map Runner. That you can use that has maps unlocked for you. Like if I look at the map right now, I don't know where anything is. The paths are not here. But this is the path we took. We went out of the garage. We followed this west essentially and then we're going north we're gonna turn left and get this watchtower this is gonna be a little slow it's a little muddy if you need to go into low gear you can just try and stay if there's grass that you can be on, it's usually better. Usually. Like here, I'm gonna I'm gonna pick this spot that looks like it's got a little bit of grass on it. And I'm gonna veer across and kinda go the short way, get through this, make a left.
and you can go right here this is the more like not this is actually has a road right but it's sort of a winding road goes up the hill we're gonna go past that just past these trees here and then make a right off the path and it kind of looks like a little bit of a path i guess that's right here file this Be careful going down this. When you make the left hand turn here, you can roll this truck. So just go very slow, turn very slow, and you won't have any problems. Just don't go fast when you make that turn. All right, so we go up this hill, follow the path, and we're gonna find the Scout 800, and we're gonna take it back to the garage with us. There it is, right up there. Now I have my reasons for doing it this way. I don't necessarily like using this Scout 800. Um, if you've watched any of my other videos, you'll know my opinions on the Scout 800 and, and the fact that I like uh, tipping it. It's a very common theme. So go ahead and turn it on right away. We're just going to use its gas to help us. It is full and fully repaired, and it just makes it easier to tow. And we're going to follow that same sort of shortcut back. So again, we're going to make a real slow turn when we get there. And it's around this bend just down the hill as we start going downhill. right about right before this rock here so again just go real slow if you have to go in low and just make this turn real slow and the scout will follow if it tips over you can winch it back onto its tires with this truck or if this tips over you can use the scout to tip it over because you can use both of these vehicles right now so we came from the left, um, but going back, what am I stuck on? A something, a little rock on the ground. We're going to make a right instead of going left. It's just a little bit easier to get back, a little more direct. We don't have to go through that mud again. And you can take this way. We'll show you where it comes out. And so uh, if you don't feel like going through to get that watchtower, that is totally up to you. Ooh. We're going a little fast. So this brings us right if we should be seeing it here shortly yep there's the town brings us right on the north end of town essentially is where this path brings us it's starting to get a little dark that's okay we might have to do part of this in the dark if we if we get to the other zone and it's nighttime i'll just wait until it's daytime because it's a little bit easier to show you So basically where we came out, this is this path right here. We, we came this way down here instead of going straight and then making a left. It's, it's a little bit longer, I think, for the initial path maybe, but I think coming back it just makes it a little easier. Turn our all-wheel drive off. We don't need that anymore. On the road, you don't need it.
We're going right past where we were. And uh, for this part, I am going to uh, skip ahead. Basically, you saw us come this way. We're going to just go right back the same path. Use your map if you need to. We're going to take it all the way back to the garage. So we'll see you back there in a second. Okay, we are almost to the garage here, and that that cut took almost exactly five minutes if you're keeping track of time. Um, so it's something that uh, if you're doing this real time, we're at about a half an hour. So we are going to swing by the fuel truck, fill both of these up, because we definitely want fuel in both, or the fuel trailer, I should say. All right, we can turn the engine off on the Scout, but we're going to drag it over to the garage entrance so it can be put in the garage. We want that thing full. All right, so let's release the winch. We're going to park this in the garage, and then the first thing we're going to do is we're going to swap the tires back out again. We're going to take the mud tires off, put the highway tires back on. Okay. Then we want to hop in the Scout 800, take it to the garage, and give it those tires that we just took off. Because this can also use 31 inch mud tires. Or in the in the case again of the all terrain tires, same thing can use the AS1, 2s, and 3s. So whichever one you buy can swap from truck to truck. That's why I wanted to show you that. So we're gonna equip these. Ooh, I did a little bit of damage to the front end apparently. Okay, so now what we do is we retain this truck. It's going to give you a warning saying deploy from another garage will cost money. That's the hard mode thing, okay? So that's okay. Now we're going to hit the global map button and we're going to we're going to swing all the way over, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going to Glades, okay? And we're going to just hop right into the garage in Glades. Now if it's nighttime, I am going to skip again and we'll just wait until it's daytime for you so you can see what's going on. But there is two tasks that we need to do. So we're going to grab this out of the garage. And it's going to say, you need to pay $3,500, which is the $3,500 we needed. Okay. So tires, whatever tires you choose, plus $3,500. That's all this is going to cost you. Um, the rest of the money comes from a, a source that we're going to show you here in a minute. In a, in a, in a little bit. Um, so let's go ahead and leave the garage. So yeah, it's coming up on uh, afternoon here. Um, so what I'm going to do is we're going to wait it out. So let's just park this. Now if you're doing this in real game time, you do have to sit and wait. So it does take a little bit of time to do, but I'm going to go ahead and do that. And we're just going to stop the engine so I don't waste gas. And we'll be back in the morning. Okay, we are back. It is almost 4.30 in the morning here. We're just waiting a little bit longer. And if you notice, the time does tick when you're in this menu. Uh, the only time it doesn't is if you go into, let's go out here and go into this menu, then the time stops. Um, so we're gonna go back into the map here, to wait a little bit longer. Um, the time flow, by the way, in the game is three seconds per minute. Um, which is essentially three minutes per hour or 72 minutes for an entire day. So if you have to wait out night or if you need to take a break and it's nighttime and you leave the game on for 10 minutes, you'll elapse a few hours. So like I said, it's something that it's nice to uh, know the time frame of how long it takes for time to elapse in the game. Uh, but we are going to go to our contracts and to Harvest Corp. And then we're going to select the Beast Rising. This is vehicle number one we're going to go get. And you can actually see it right here. You can see my mouse pointer. It's right there. And we have to follow this path around the garage. In fact, we're not even going to... I'm going to just make a more direct path. Because I'm going to cut through a little bit. This road can be a little muddy. If you're using the non-JAT tires, it's easier to just go on the grass. 
Um, but we do need to go through some mud, so we'll just have to take it slow. Um, but uh, like I said, if you if you're not using the JAT tire pack, just take your time. You know, use low gear, um, wiggle the tires a little bit if you get if you get feel a little stuck. Use your winch if there's winch points. You'll make it. Um, I've done it with even the stock tires on this thing. It's doable. It's just very difficult. Uh, so you, you again, we're going for the easier functionality. Um, we want to make it easy on us. And oh, and it's Bork thirty. <laughs> Sorry about that. Dog is seeing somebody outside. So, but this is the contract we're gonna do for the first vehicle. And it's just starting to get light out. So let's throw our lights on, turn our parking brake off, and head out. So we're gonna head out of the garage, make a right. And again, follow the rule of grass is good. Dirt is not necessarily quick. So like the road goes to the left, but it looks kind of like it's dirt. So I'm going to go to the right and just go slow through here. There's some bumps and divots and that kind of thing like that right there. Don't uh, don't full throttle through this. You might tip it. Like right here is another one, I think. Yeah, right there. When you're not on a path, you can see it's always better to air on the side of caution and go a little slower, but it does make it easier to take these little shortcuts instead of going through what looks like it could be muddy. We're still even in two-wheel drive here. We haven't even turned the all-wheel drive on yet. Okay, so this contract is a contract. It does make us a little bit of money. Now, if you remember, we had only $1,000 left after moving this vehicle over. And you're thinking, well, we're going to get two vehicles. How are we going to get money back? We'll show you. And I'm going to see we're getting kind of stuck. You do have to get into that square. But we're going to try and back up, straighten out. If you ever feel like you're going to tip, like I said, just go slow. Use the grassy area for getting in here. And then we're going to cut this way. This is, again, we're tipping a little bit here. I'm just going to go real slow. Stay as out of the mud as you can. Again, if you're not using the JAT tires, it uh, will be a little slower through here, but you'll make it. Don't worry. There's no winch points, though. You just have to pick a good path and go real slow and, like I said, kind of wiggle your tires a little bit. There is some deep water in here you want to try and avoid. We just need to get close enough to this thing to hook up a winch to it. Which is about where I'm going here. Back up so I can aim outwards again. Because this thing is a drivable vehicle as well. You just can't drive it just yet. So you do have to winch it. If you could drive this thing and pull the scout out, you wouldn't even need tires. So we're going to turn the engine on right away. And it is going to help us drive out of here. So again, just go slow. It'll catch up to you. It's going to get to the point where it might actually push you a little bit. And that's okay. There's going to be points where you might need it. Again, just try and avoid the deep water. As long as you're not trying to pull the winch, it will drive. It will try and drive, so it's going to help you out of this mud hole. Um, and we're going to try this. See this water here? We're going to try and avoid this water that we're coming up on. But there is this, like, kind of object in the path, and if you hit that, you'll cause damage to your vehicle. So we're going to try and avoid that as well. And we're just going to go to the right here on the grass so we don't have to go through the water. And then we're going to go around. Remember, that was kind of muddy in this middle here. We're going to go around again on the grass. And we can cross up a little, a little ways here. Watch out for these tree stumps. I totally forgot about these. 
If you back up, it will actually pull you sometimes as well. Because <laughs> it is trying to drive. So don't go through the tree stumps. Don't do what I just did. Stay just off to the road to the right. You'll get... You can get through here, but this thing might get stuck. Like, oop, it didn't actually get stuck right there. Kind of surprised, actually. Okay, so this is kind of dry here, so we can cut across up ahead. Again, avoid the tree stumps. There's no tree stumps on the on the side we took coming in, so it's a little, little bit easier this way. So all we have to do is get this back to the garage, and it is ours. So we're just going to follow the same path. In fact, you can kind of see your tire marks through the grass here. Watch this bump. This bump again, I can see it. You might want to winch yourself a little closer to the vehicle to make the turn. So this thing is a articulated steering. Now this is a tractor technically, but it's all wheel drive on all the time, diff lock on all the time, mud tires, can tow trailers. Uh, very good for early game Michigan. The suspension is kind of crummy if you if you encounter a bunch of rocks. It doesn't like to go over the rocks too much. And that's really its only downfall. Real good at rescuing vehicles, or to, or uh, you know towing vehicles like this. All right, so that just gave us two thousand dollars. Okay, so now we have three thousand dollars, right? And we are going to turn off the engine of the truck. Um, let's release the winch. I'm just going to get turned around here. I do want to take four gallons from this. So it does have some fuel in it. We're going to just top ourselves back off. Okay. Leave that with 43 gallons. And let's, uh, let's stop this engine and we'll just park the Kiravets. This is the Kiravets K700. Like I said, it's got a little bit of damage. Now that it's ours, we can drive it and we'll repair it at that same trailer that we repaired the food star in Michigan once we take it back there. So for now, we don't even have the money to transfer this back over. We're just going to hop in the 800 again and take a quick look at the map. I'm going to show you where we're going to go. Um, this is the path and there's going to be a railroad track right about here and then you just make a left at the railroad track and there's a um, there's a Y in the railroad track we're gonna make a right at that Y and take it all the way down till we get to like a main train hub and we'll show you when we get there but I'm gonna speed this portion up for you just so it doesn't take as long on the video but this is where we will be going you just want to follow the railroad track um, you can actually drive on the railroad track, which is what I'll be doing. It's definitely the easier path. You just want to make sure you slow down. There's like these crossings and you don't want to take those too fast. But we're going to follow the same go on the grass rule through here. Might have to adjust our dot a little bit. No, nope. we hit it. Our blue dot GPS. Okay, so we're going to get through here, and I'm going to show you the railroad track, and then we'll skip ahead, because like I said, it's sort of just a, a boring trip of driving along the railroad track, and you take a right at the Y, and you get to sort of like a, looks like a train station is what I would call it, where you'd be able to like board a train. Yeah, here's the railroad track right here. You make a left. 
and then you just follow the railroad track. So we're gonna speed it up here for you, just so you don't have to watch the entire thing in real time. We'll catch you when we get to the uh, railroad station. Okay, we are here. So this is what I was talking about. It kind of looks like you can board a train here. And there's this trailer off to the left if I can get over there. Sometimes you might have to help winch yourself off the railroad track with this one. We're going to take the road for the rest of the way. And it's a very easy path. You just follow the actual road, not this one that goes to these houses, but this way. With the dotted line, you make a right. And we just follow this around. Keep following the road. Gonna make a right turn here and we're gonna see our free vehicle and free crane here in a second. This is number two that we're taking back with us. Okay, so there it is. We're just gonna walk up to this thing and discover it. You get level three here. Ooh, beep beep, hit the horn on accident. And that is the Taiga 6436, which if you know uh, SnowRunner, it's one of the better off-road vehicles in the game. And this one is drivable the moment you find it, unlike the one in, in Tamir, uh, that you have to repair and put tires on it, and it's kind of stuck in some mud. This one is just follow a railroad track and go get it. So we're going to turn this off, and we're probably too far away, so I'm just going to go to the map and switch to it. And like I said, it's a little bit damaged, but it is very drivable. And what we're gonna do, since this has a crane, you can either winch the Scout, but it tends to bounce around quite a bit and you don't want it to like damage the fuel tank and lose its fuel. So we are, I guess we could probably, how much fuel can I take out of this now? I could take, you can just empty it right away. Then we can winch it. Let's just winch it. We'll let it bounce around behind us. If it gets damaged, it doesn't matter, because that's the money. The money to take both of these vehicles back is going to be from selling the Scout 800. Uh, mind you, at half price, and we're going to lose out on one of the um, upgrade sales. There is a, a lifted suspension that you get for it eventually in Michigan. And you won't be able to sell it until much later in the game when you find another Scout 800 you can use. Uh, in Ontario, actually, is where you get the second one. So you do get another one if you really like this one, but I don't, so... <laughs> so yeah, what, I, what I've done in the past with this particular method of getting these two vehicles is you can just winch, or uh, just crane this thing. Just... Leave it hanging out in front of you like a carrot and <laughs> just pick it up with the crane. It's definitely more entertaining, that's for sure. But 
I wasn't aware that you could just take all the gas out of it right away. I just always thought if you're bouncing along these railroad tracks, which we're going to be doing. Let's get over to the other side if we can. I feel like the coming in the right side. Okay, let's get across. Come on. Is it going to just drive this way the entire way? Come on, go over. There we go. There we go. Okay. There we go. A little damage on the scout, no big deal. Is that it's getting sold. And if it starts bouncing around and I blow a hole in the fuel tank at this point, it's empty, so I don't care. So yeah, just follow the railroad track back. And then you have basically two very good vehicles to start uh, hard, uh, hard mode out with. Again, this is all wheel drive on all the time, diff lock on all the time, 88 gallons of fuel. So uh, more fuel than any truck that you get in Michigan. I shouldn't say that, there is uh, there is one, but it's definitely not as fuel hungry. Um, the only bad thing about this thing is you can't use a regular crane, not this crane, like a cargo crane and a bed at the same time with this particular truck. So you will need to pay for loading cargo if you're using this for cargo. Uh, but the time you make up and the just the ease of use, again, we're going for easy, uh, not necessarily free, because if it was free, we wouldn't be spending $3,500 three times to move vehicles around. Um, but uh, it is definitely a very good vehicle to use. Um, even with highway tires, it can get through mud, but you do have the ability to equip. So if you don't have the JAT pack, you can put on all-terrain tires immediately, even at this level. Uh, whereas the Fleet Star and the PMC that you get in Michigan, um, those require you to be level 6. And this one can have it right away. And if you have the JAT pack, you can actually put mud tires on it right away. Or only a little bit more. Uh, now, mind you, we don't have enough money. We will not have enough money when we get back to equip it with either tires. Now, if you did this without the JAT pack, you probably would have just enough to put the all-terrain tires on this thing. And if not, it would be like maybe one mission, and then you'd be able to stop by the garage and put some all trains on it. So definitely worth it. Again, these things right here, you just want to not go over super fast. That can cause damage or pop a tire in worst case scenario and you don't have any spare tires. You can drive vehicles on a blown tire, but it's just very difficult and we're already going over something fairly difficult. Did I pass my turn? No, I did not. There's a spot that I like to jump off the railroad track here. Because there's like these little barricade things that you can't get past easily with a larger vehicle like this, especially one with these crane arms. And it is right about in the right spot. I could have went right there too. Right about here. I like to hop off the railroad track. Ooh. Let's not let's not tip this thing over. That'd be a bad time. I don't think I could I don't think I could winch it back with the uh, scout. You can also go right there too, probably is a little easier. Just anywhere that gets you back to the road here instead of being on the track. Again, this is a little bit muddy, but this thing has no problem going through that stuff. 
It's a little bit weighed down because of the crane. And we're not going to use this crane immediately in, in hard mode. You will eventually probably find uses for it. But for the fact that you don't have to spend $7,500 later on this crane, very useful. You can always just take your bed off and swap this crane on. Because it is yours to keep. Uh, except I missed my turn. Yeah, I missed my turn. Just push the scout around, it's okay. But this is pretty much it. You go and get these two vehicles from the glades. Get yourself two very good starting uh, hard mode vehicles. Like I said, this thing will last you pretty much forever. The, uh, the Taiga is always useful in any map. It's uh, You can't put any upgrades on it because you, you, they're all in uh, Tamir to get the upgrades for this, but uh, even without upgrades and the upgraded motor, it's still pretty darn good. Just a little slow to begin with, but slow is good in the beginning. You don't want to you don't want to be blazing trails with uh, stuff and causing damage. Because again, hard mode, everything costs money to fix. So we are going to make sure since we emptied this of no fuel. I'm just going to make sure that we drag it on top of the garage circle here. Make sure it's on top and release the winch and you can go into the garage. And let's just take our scout here 100 and go into the garage. Now, important thing, again, we're going to swap tires. That's why we kept these tires. So go back to these because we want to take those and put them back on the Chevy. And then how you do this is you retain it uh, here. Go to your truck storage. And now you can sell it, okay? And we're going to get only half. So it's 12700 is the value of it. We're only going to get 6350 But that's enough for the 7000 we need to bring these two back to Michigan. So we're going to retain this one. Retain this one. Go to our global map. Go back to the garage in Michigan. Where we have our fleet tire and our Chevy. So we have our two original vehicles still. And then we're going to go to storage. And when you hit deploy, it says you want to pay 3500 Yes. And truck storage again. Deploy. 3500 again. Leaves you with $2,350. And four really good starting hard mode vehicles. So... That's the tutorial. Hope you liked it. As always, if you made it this far, like, comment, and subscribe. And we'll catch you in the next one.